When you see the integral of ln over x, ln of x over x, you kind of have some trouble thinking about what should you, what you should do uh, because it doesn't look like a nested function. But what really what this really is is it's a product of a derivative and the original function because if you differentiate ln of x it gives you L 1 over x, right? So in such a case if you set u as the original function then du would be 1 over x dx so you can see that this much would be same as du and that actually simplifies the integral as u times du because this is u and uh, the antiderivative of u is one half u squared plus c where u is equal to ln of x so it's one half ln of x squared plus c okay let's do another another one here uh, now this second question this actually looks like the der derivative of this function being this but uh, strangely if you have the derivative being divided it, it doesn't work well with uh, u substitution so in this case you need a totally different strategy and one of the reasons why integration is so hard compared to differentiation is that uh, very similar looking questions would end up with a completely different approach so uh, that's why integral is so harder so much harder you need to do a lot of practice problems uh, until you see which ones are the necessary strategy for integrating so this one uh, you want to split in this into two fractions so the first fraction will be this one and the second fraction will be this one. Okay. The fraction can be split into 1 over 2x plus x squared over 2x. And uh, since 1 half is a common factor, I can pull that out. And then you have 1 over x. And x squared divided by x is just x. Uh, now the integral of 1 over x is ln of x integral of x is 1 half x squared plus c and if you simplify by multiplying by 1 half you get 1 half ln of x plus 1 fourth x squared plus c as the answer now part c is done in a similar way uh, integral of 1 plus x squared over 2x and uh, despite the fact that uh, 1 plus x seems to be a nested function. Uh, again, if you try to use the u substitution, uh, you'll see that it's not going to lead to any other integral that's easier to solve. So uh, this one, you actually need to expand this. Uh, see, 1 plus x times 1 plus x is 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times x is x x times 1 is x, x times x is x squared, over 2x dx, and uh, you get 1 over 2x, 2x over 2x is 1, and x squared divided by 2x would be x over 2 dx. So what I did was I combined the x plus x as 2x and made this into three fractions, the first one and then the second one and then the third one. Uh, after this, uh, this is 1 half times 1 over x, so it integrates to 1 half ln of x. 1 integrates to x. x integrates w to 1 half x squared, and because there is already a 1 half, it becomes 1 fourth x squared plus c as the answer. On the other hand, d has the derivative of the inside function, see, 1 plus x squared's derivative is 2x, right? So derivative of the inside function 
is multiplied instead of di divided. In this case, you really want to use the u substitution. So u equals to 1 plus x squared, du equals to 2x dx, and therefore uh, 2x times dx becomes du. And you end up with u to the fifth power times du. And the power rule says you add 1 to the exponent, put the reciprocal in front. And then since u is 1 plus x squared, the final answer is 1 over u, 1 plus x squared, so 6th power plus c. Uh, for e, this is just one of the uh, integration rules that you have to know. So uh, 2 to the x prime gives you 2 to the x ln of 2. That's, that's the general formula. a to the x prime is a to the x ln of a. And uh, this, this is why uh, people like e to the x so much. Uh, because when it comes to integrating or differentiating, you don't have to care about these annoying ln of some values. Uh, okay, so uh, what, what does this mean? This means that uh, if you have 1 over ln of 2, 2 to the x prime, you're going to get uh, 1 over ln of 2, 2 to the x ln of 2, and ln of 2 ln of 2 cancels, and you just get 2 to the x, right? So we know that this is the antiderivative of this. Okay? So the, the result is that the antiderivative is indeed 1 over ln of 2, 2 to the u, plus c. And notice that this uh, is originally posed as a question for u. So u is indeed where you stop. You, don't have, you didn't do any substitution, so this should be the answer to part e. Okay, f, integral of sine of 2x plus 1 dx. For this one, you need u equals to 2x plus 1, where du would be 2 dx, so that if you divide by 2, you know that dx must be equal to 1 half times du. So you end up with this integral being equal to integral of sine of u 1 half du. 1f is a constant multiple, so we pull that out. And you're asking what sine of u du. And uh, if you differentiate cosine, it's negative sine. So if you differentiate negative cosine, it, you get positive sine, right? So you get negative cosine as your antiderivative. And then since this time u is from 2x plus 1, you have to put that back in. Now, g, uh, here, uh, again, you just have a fraction where there's no relationship between the derivative uh, of any kind. So you just split into a bunch of fractions, x cubed over x squared, minus 3 times x over x squared, uh, plus 5 times 1 over x squared. And x cubed over x squared is just x. x over x squared is 1 over x. And then x 1 over x squared is x to the negative 2 power. And the reason I write it this way be is because then I can use the power rule. x integrates to 1 half x squared. 1 over x integrates to ln of absolute value of x. Oh, that's something that I may have forgotten. If you integrate 1 over x, you have to make sure that you get absolute values, okay? So uh, let's go back and change all these absolute values if I, if I see any. Uh, there's another one here, yeah. You need absolute values. Okay, here, here you don't because uh, uh, it, you're not integrating 1 over x, so this is fine. Okay, so you have uh, x to the negative 2 Adding, neg adding 1 to top gives you negative 1, and putting the reciprocal gives you, the reciprocal gives you uh, negative 1, so it's negative 5. Okay, 
h integral of e to the negative x over 2 dx and you get u equals to negative x over 2 so that du equals to negative 1 over 2 dx and that gives you uh, let's see if I multiply by negative 2 that's negative 2 du equals to dx right so uh, that gives you integral of e to the u times negative 2 du so negative 2 can be pulled out and then you just get integral of e to the u du e to the u integrates to e to the u so you go back to u being negative x over 2 and that's the answer so that was actually a rather simple question okay let's look at uh, i uh, integral of sine squared x cosine x dx now uh, for this question you need to know what sine squared of x means it means sine of x squared cosine x uh, it turned out that uh, when mathematicians worked with sines and cosines they ended up having these sine x squared so many times they just decided to make a convention that whenever they see this they'll just write it this way and that convention is somewhat dangerous because uh, sometimes you forget what it means and you don't know what to do so you first have to remind yourself that sine squared of x means sine x parenthesis squared and only after that you can say u is equal to sine x which would mean that du equals to cosine x dx and then uh, you end up with integral of u squared and cosine x dx is du right which gives you uh, it's a power rule again you add one to the exponent put the reciprocal in front and finally the answer is one third sine x cubed so we we're going to write it like this and then plus c okay let's look at j integral of square root of 5 minus 2x dx another u substitution u equals to 5 minus 2x du would be negative 2 5 differentiates to 0 negative 2x differentiates to negative 2 and then you attach a dx dividing by negative 2 both sides gives you that dx must be negative 1 half du so all this makes you rewrite this as square root of u and then times negative one half du and you can pull the negative one half outside whereas you can rewrite e square root of u as u to the one half power and then you add one to the exponent and then put the reciprocal which is two thirds and then uh, that's it two two cancels negative one-third and u is equal to 5 minus 2x and that's the answer okay uh, what about k k uh, integral of square root of x square root of x plus 1 now while this does look like a nested function the derivative of this is 1 over 2 radical x so it's not this one so in this case, uh, you should just multiply it and integrate it as it is. So square root of x times square root of x is just x. And then uh, square root of x times 1 is square root of x, but you can rewrite it as 1 half power, in which case you can easily integrate by x integrates to 1 half x squared, and x to the 1 half power, you add 1, that's 3 over 2, and then you put the reciprocal in front, which is 2 thirds plus c. So that was actually a sim simpler question than it looked. Okay, now L, integral of square root of x, square root of x plus 1 squared. Now this looks even more tempting that you want to uh, set u as this thing. And, you, you know, actually there is a way to set u as this and uh, do a long u substitution, but you're, you're going to find that that's a lot harder so instead we're just going to do something similar to the previous question except that we're just going to rewrite x square root of x plus 1 as square root of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1 and then
then uh, square root of x times square root of x is x square root of x times 1 is square root of x, 1 times square root of x is square root of x, so you have two of the square root of x's, and then 1 times 1 gives you 1. And then you can rewrite this as x to the 1 half power, x to the first power, 2 times x to the 1 half power, plus uh, x to the zeroth power is 1, right? Uh, and the reason I do this is because if I multiply, it's easy to see what power it needs to be. x to the 1 half times x to the first is x to the 3 halves because the exponents add up, right? Uh, 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so it's 2x. 1 half plus 0 is 1 half, so this is what you get. Then uh, adding 1 to the exponent gives you 5 over 2. Put the reciprocal in front. 2x integrates to x squared. x to the 1 half, uh, you add 1 to the exponent, which is 3 over 2, and then put the reciprocal in front, plus c. That's it. Okay. Um, m, uh, you have 1 over 2 radical x square root of x plus 1 to the fourth. And this time, indeed, square root of x plus 1 prime is 1 over 2 radical x. So you do have the derivative of this present here as a multiplication. In this case, it's a perfect thing to do. Uh, it's a perfect problem for a u substitution, okay? Uh, so du is 1 over 2 radical x dx, so that we know that this much is now du and this middle thing will be u to the fourth power. So we end up with integral of u to the fourth power du, and then we use the power rule. You add one to the exponent, put the reciprocal, and then you uh, plug in square root of x plus one back. And this is what you get. Now you have this uh, integral of x to the pi plus pi dx. And uh, the key to this question is that pi looks like some variable. So it looks scary, but it's just a number. So you can just use the power rule, which says x to the n dx is you add 1 to the exponent and put the reciprocal in front. That's the power rule. So that's all you need to use which is that this is uh, x to the pi plus 1, 1 over pi plus 1. And then if you integrate any constant, it's constant times x, right? So if you know that integrating 2 dx gives you 2x, then integrating pi would give you pi x. So that's all there is. And lastly, You have uh, 1 over 2 radical r plus 1 dr, and uh, you can set r plus 1 as equal to u, so that the derivative of r plus 1 is 1, so 1 times dr equals to du, and uh, that would make this into the integral of 1 over 2 times radical u du because dr is same as du. And once you get to this point, it's, it's very helpful if you know this formula that square root of x prime is 1 over 2 radical x. So using this, you can rewrite this as, well, this just means that the antiderivative of, of 1 over 2 radical x is square root of x, so the answer is square root of u plus c, and uh, u is r plus 1, so this is what you get.